And so now we come to the second part of this uh, recruitment film. And Jimmy Deere and his friend go across to the west side of campus. They're going to visit all the various recreational facilities. This is the building. It was called the Union Recreation Center at the time. It was the original building on campus. And we're going to see a lot of the interior of this building. Uh, it was located where the Joseph Building presently is at the corner of Winding Way and uh, Dana Avenue. And as notice, it's Jimmy Dare and Jack Bates on the left there, enjoying a little music there. This is inside the building you just saw. The music continues there, the entertainment, and presumably this is one of the rooms on the first floor of the, the Union Building, or as the students called it at the, at the time, the Old Red Building. And the dormitory, of course, uh, Elliot was right next door. And the leisure hours pass very pleasantly, and you're going to see some of the things that the students did. And of course, Jack is showing all of this to uh, Jimmy Dare to uh, indicate to him what a wonderful time he's going to have with Xavier. I think that's Jimmy actually shooting there, and uh, obviously did very well. Now, one of the other students is going to try it here, and I think he's going to be less successful. Probably on the first floor of the building there. Now they're down in the basement. Believe it or not, there was a bowling alley in the uh, basement of the Union Building. There's Jimmy trying his hand at bowling, and you'll see he's pretty good at it. A strike. Now <laughs> there's the kid climbing in down there and setting up the pins again. And of course, the student cafeteria was also in the Union Building, the old red building. And um, they're going through the line here. Looks as though everybody ate pretty well. This building actually was relatively new when the, uh, the college or the university purchased it um, because the uh, Avondale Athletic Club from which the, the college purchased really didn't last very long. That was a very healthy meal there. And notice the neckties. Uh, I'm sure there was a dress code at the time. Probably um, everybody had to wear a necktie and a dress shirt. Notice the doctor there not very carefully sawing the student's leg off. So that um, not recommended medical style, but uh, probably a little bit of humor here. And we will see, oh, here, here's a picture of the doctor. And he had a pretty big job because he would acted as the doctor for all the teams. This is the Corcoran Football Stadium. And in 29, this was brand new. It opened for the first time for the 1928-1929 season. You can see the West Bleachers there. And above it, of course, is the Union Building. And to the right, that, that's Hinkle Hall, which was the dormitory at the time. You can also see the press box there uh, for the football stadium, which did hold 15,000 people at, at capacity. Joe Meyer, whom you met earlier, he was the football coach at the time. I believe a graduate of Notre Dame uh, came here and, 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 um, and he, uh, coached the football team for a number of years, and that's he. And here's a practice session. Now, I think this is what we presently use as a baseball diamond, uh, the football team. This is the baseball diamond to the north of the stadium and to the north of the uh, field house. And I think that smokestack there in that uh, tower, I believe that's the Zumbio box plant, which used to be up on um, Herald Avenue in, in Norwood, which the university imploded a few years ago when we um, develop that property up there. And now you're going to get a better view. This is the baseball diamond, the tennis courts, and that is where the O'Connor Sports Center presently is, where those tennis courts. And you can see the cork in the field, the West Bleachers here, and, and the people coming onto the football field from the locker rooms, which would have been in the field house there. And you can see the cars, the neat looking cars, and the buildings are beginning to appear up top there. On the left would be the Albers Biology Building, and then Hinkle Hall, which you've seen before, the Jesuit residence and administration. And then the Walter Seaton Schmidt Library Building, 
um, which was also the home of the si seismography equipment, incidentally. A very big thing in the early years is Aver, and then what is now Edgecliff Hall, Edgecliff. Notice a nice crowd at this football game. The Fool House named the Frederick, Mr. and Mrs. Frederick uh, Schmidt. This was a gift of Walter Seaton Schmidt, whom you've seen before, class of 05. Um, very generous con contributor. This building was uh, dedicated in March 1928. And on that, this is the main entrance to it. People don't know, the, but actually the main entrance to the Schmidt building was up on Winding Way. And here is a very nice picture of Walter Seaton Schmidt. And uh, here's the basketball team uh, practicing. The dedication, as I mentioned, took place on March the 7th, 1928. And Xavier, uh, still a college at that time, played the University of Cincinnati for the very first time in basketball. And uh, they say that the, uh, the president of UC, the president of the Xavier, Father Brockman, and uh, Walter Seaton Schmidt, uh, who gifted the building to the university, uh, and the mayor, Mayor uh, Seasongood was on hand. They claimed 10,000 people got into this building. I can't imagine 10,000 people in this building, but that's what they say. But happily, this basketball team, or one very similar to it, won the game 29 to 25. So uh, it was a very successful uh, occasion. And basketball has remained important as ever, ever since. Here's the team. And presumably they're on the floor there of the field house. There are a number of facilities in this building, and, and some of them you will, you will see. Uh, when it was opened in 1928, it was the largest college football, a uh, field house, lar largest college field house uh, in the state of Ohio. Here's a picture of the locker room. They were very proud of this facility and um, made very good use. And the locker rooms were also used by the football team. Had a number of handball courts, and maybe still do. I'm really not sure whether the handball courts are over there today or not. Presumably, this is Jimmy Dare and uh, Jack Bates playing. There's another view of it. And um, many things happened here. Uh, they would have special masses in this uh, place at the beginning of the school year, the Mass of the Holy Spirit. Uh, a commencement took place here. Dances took place here. And of course, it also had an inside track here, which you'll, you'll see in just a minute. It looks as though the floor might have been of dirt at the time and that the basketball court possibly was somewhat elevated in the middle. I'm not really sure of that, but this clearly seems to be dirt along here. As you can see, uh, Jimmy Dare is being introduced to all the rec recreational activities. <laughs> None are being left out. He went an outdoor, outdoor track. Now, exactly where this is, I'm not sure. As I recall, there was a track uh, around the baseball diamond at one time. But this doesn't really look like the baseball diamond to me, although perhaps it is. and the other sports as well. And again, I really do not think this is on campus. I think it might, might have been somewhere in the neighborhood. Uh, there were various fields around, and um, I suspect that the landmarks there, I don't really recognize that water tower. Now again, this would be um, carrying on the theme of the uh, entire video. Uh, Jack Bates and Jimmy Dare, and obviously enjoying the race here, smoking cigarettes besides. Notice the automobiles, I think they're really neat. This is a baseball game, and it is recorded in the yearbook for the year. Xavier defeated the University of Minnesota, obviously on tour. 
again, I, this, this is not the baseball diamond on campus. Maybe because it was a big game, they expected maybe a bit of a crowd, they moved to some baseball diamond uh, in the neighborhood. But um, baseball also was a very, very big sport here, uh, even before football. And now you're going to see the, uh, what I have to assume are the managers of the two teams. And uh, this may be before the game or after. This does seem to be on campus, and, and I think those were the tennis courts behind it. And then our baseball diamond behind the tennis courts there. That's Joe Meyer on the left, and uh, I'm perhaps the athletic director from the University of Minnesota. Notice the M on his sleeve there. And, they're just chatting probably before or after the baseball game that you just saw. And tennis and golf also, where Dr. First is back again. You met him a little bit earlier here. And there he is. Now those were the tennis courts, I'm quite sure, um, on campus, the ones that you saw earlier. I think that would be the baseball diamond in the background there. There's no shorts in those days. If you played tennis, you played like a gentleman. This is a, a golf course, I, perhaps Avon Field up on Reading Road, uh, but I'm not sure about that. But again, Jimmy Deer and um, Jack Butts or Jack Bates are here uh, watching the uh, people tee off. Now I think at this point, um, I think that's Jimmy Deere getting us some pointers from somebody or other, and he's going to try it himself here. We'll see what kind of luck he has. Oops. Well, nice try. And this is the end. They're they're doing their putting here. I like the knickers. That the men are wearing. Yes, okay. Now, this is the porch in front of uh, Hinkle Hall, a building you saw a little bit earlier. One more final thing for us. Know the, notice the letters. Those were very, very important. And you didn't buy those in the bookstore, you earned those. You got a letter, usually for sports, football or basketball, having performed for a year, and um, then. Uh, You've got a sweater to match, and uh, you sported it. And, and here is a, a, a ceremony. Um, it looks as though Jimmy is going to be leaving this group, but the video is not over. We'll, uh, we have one more in a segment for you. They're going to go off, and we'll see them again in just a few minutes. And I think this brings the second part to an end.